When you see the lights up high, meet me in the pot. When you see the air in the sky, meet me in the pot. <sighs> Hi. I wanted to talk about health today, of course, but in the aspect not um, pertaining to anything specific. I want to talk about how we feel as individuals, if we feel healthy or not. Normally when you feel healthy, your body feels good, you feel your muscles, you want to work out, and you like know what to do. You're not concerned if you have a burger, for example. 80% in the kitchen, 20% what you do at the gym or in yoga class. And what that means is 80% of your body's health and vitality and nutrition is in what you put in your body and on your body, including things like lotions, if it has exedotoxins or other preservatives in them, your shampoos, your conditioners, your especially deodorants. Um, whatever you put on your skin, you absorb, so that is included in that 80% bracket, including food, of course. Now, there's probably a few things that I knowingly make my body susceptible to that are not necessarily good, and that would be nail polish, which a lot of women, females use, nail polish, um, perfumes, and occasionally lo a lotion that smells good. Other than that, I don't knowingly put a lot of bad things in my body <coughs> outside of food. But that's one thing that many of us look past is that our health is solely in what we eat. But it isn't just what we eat, it's what we make our bodies what we're exposed to, including the air and chemicals like cleaning. If you clean your bathroom with a chemical versus if you clean it with uh, apple cider vinegar water or um, lemon water. You know, there's a huge, huge difference. Things on labels, especially chemicals, do voice concern on how toxic these substances are. However, sadly, they are so common today that we don't necessarily think twice about having gloves on while we're cleaning our bathroom if we're using chemicals. Now, I use a natural cleaner, of course, but occasionally I will use one if I don't have my natural cleaner available, especially if I'm cleaning like my mom's bathroom or something. Like, she only has chemicals. Um, in reference to, especially like, in the bathroom, many people have sprays in the bathroom if, you know, it stinks in there, right? And that spray, look on the bottle, not the best thing for you. So I just want to bring into light the, the aspect that our health does start in the gut. It does start in the gut. It starts with what you are putting in your body, but it also is what you put on your body, what we're breathing, what we are exposing ourselves to, and even like dish soap can be detrimental to our health. And those toxins that we absorb slowly build up and up and up until there's a bigger issue and it forms in the in the uh, site of maybe cancer or tumors or Alzheimer's like a brain neurological disorder because it's slowly over the years deteriorating your mind after being exposed to something like that <sighs> and for ladies especially lotions makeup um, perfumes, obviously, hair products, 
are are super bad. They are super bad, actually. They're really fucking bad. Yeah, pardon, pardon my language. But there are options. There are options, and that's what I want to discuss. Because we don't have to make ourselves toxic every single time we want to clean, or every single morning when we do our makeup, or every single time we want to make a room smell good. We don't have to be exposed to that type of carcinogenic agents. So there are natural toothpaste, there are natural shampoos, there are natural cleaners. You can make your own cleaner. I make my own cleaner. It's really flippin' easy and super cheap. Um, you can get a natural uh, laundry detergent. I don't use detergent at all. I just use uh, castile soap in my laundry. So because that the chemicals that are in the soap stick to your clothes. It sticks to your clothes and then absorbs into your bloodstream. So I don't use chemicals on my clothes. There's there's alternatives to everything. It's just up to us to make sure that we search for those things instead to make sure that the things that we reach for are good for us and are going to help vitalize our bodies and our minds and our skin and the people around us. It really is. I'm not one for to be around um, free moving microwaves for example um, electronics like my heater back there or lamps or anything that you plug into the wall, including your cell phone charger, which which most people have right by their beds, right? And now I do use these things. However, I try to put parameters around myself that make me less susceptible to electromagnetic waves and radiation, especially from a cell phone. One of the things that I implement on a daily basis is once I'm done using something that does require electricity that's being plugged into the wall, I never leave it plugged in, ever, even if it's off, because that electricity is still moving through the wires. It's still protruding onto the room and yourself and bringing it more into the room than just in the wall. I have magnets. Magnets absorb free-moving microwaves and some crystals do as well. I have um, hematite and black tourmaline. It's a crystal. I actually have one right here. It's right by my bed. This is my black tourmaline. And they absorb free-moving microwaves and radio waves and almost if it's touching your skin it can protect it can um, form like a little protection around you because it's neutralizing those waves as it's coming to interact with your own magnetic field. So that's another thing. Just being aware of things around you, really, and I'm still learning myself. I'm still learning about different things that are in my boyfriend's shampoo, for example, or uh, things that are in makeup or things that are in whatever I'm looking at be a label reader and that's what I'm holding myself to is being a label reader and being able to be smart in the aspect of what you are exposing not only yourself to but your family and your friends and it's so hard sometimes to see someone for example, drinking soda and knowing all the step-by-step -step bad detrimental things that that soda is doing to my friend. And it makes, it does, it, make me, it makes me really, really sad. But all we can do if, all you can do is kind of plant a seed in someone. You can't just be like, oh, don't, don't drink that. It's bad for you. You can't. No, people are very sensitive about what they do in their own lives, especially when it comes to food. So all I can do to really expose 
my friends and my family to this information is conversations. And of course, it depends on who I'm talking to. But sometimes it just takes planting a seed, planting a thought in their head that will make them think about what they're doing and what they're putting in their bodies. I, I have so much love in my heart for the people around me. And this is why I'm making videos and this is why I'm trying to share this message with the world essentially is because I care. Our eyes aren't necessarily open to what we're being exposed to because we're not educated about it. We're not educated about it. Uh, companies don't want us to really know what it's doing. They just want to make money. You know, and it matters. It really matters to me on how we take care of ourselves because that will bring more happiness and vitality to the whole world in essence. <laughs> in essence, it will. I mean, the healthier you are, the happier you are, right? Get those B vitamins in your, in your brain and get happy and excited and have energy, right? Below, I'm going to post a few natural things that we could use. That's all I really want to talk about today. It's really simple. I went, we went through a lot of, um, a lot of material, a lot of subjects. I just want, to, I want. I want us to be healthy. I want us to take control of our lives. I want us to take control of ourselves and take control of our health because guess what? We can. We have that power. And we have the power to grasp it and take control of it. Guys, we do. We really do. Um, thank you for watching. Bye. <gasps> When you see the lights up high Meet me in the park